Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. And uh, the markets today are actually pushing on that little bit higher after non-farm payrolls on Friday came in just a little bit above expectations and uh, has pretty much caused most other markets just to kind of just grind that little bit slightly higher but without any kind of great conviction. And there's been quite a lot of stuff obviously happening over the weekend. You've had Donald Trump coming out saying that he thinks there's going to be a massive stock market crash. Um, that personally he thinks it's not a good time to buy stocks, that he's actually also positioned himself financially to benefit from a drop in the markets because he's so sure that it's going to go ahead and happen because you know the American economy is propped up um, with a whole bunch of mechanisms just to kind of inflate uh, the markets and he's probably not that wrong to be honest um, with cheap money and um, you know, the central bank and uh, the, chain, the talk of you know they're going to be raising interest rates, they're not going to be raising interest rates, the pumping of, of, of kind of cheap money into the economy, uh, it does kind of feel that the, um, the market rally has just been kind of pushed forward only by monetary policy and not by actual um, a kind of economic growth in that regard. Now when we look at the US 30 from a technical perspective, it actually has had a really fantastic run. Uh, it's, uh, it's gone great guns. And in fact, it's not that far away from reaching uh, its recent high. We're maybe only a few hundred points away from there. So a lot of traders still wondering how much gas is kind of left in the tank to be able to get up there. Um, we'll go ahead and see what happens. Talking about um, the kind of FX markets, so non farm payrolls actually came in slightly better than expected. Now, some people might have then thought that that would be positive for the dollar and uh, maybe adding more fuel to the fire for an interest rate hike at some point, maybe in the summer. Um, but between Yellen and Lockhart and some of the other Fed members, like they've been flip flopping quite a lot over the last couple of months in regards to their views on interest rates. And I think the, the idea is now the US doesn't want to have too strong a US dollar, it wants to remain competitive to prop up the currency. And uh, that's obviously having a bit of a knock on effect. So even though you're getting these positive numbers, positive macro data numbers coming out, you do have Janet Yellen saying that, well, not only are they not going to raise rates, but they might actually end up having to do another rate cut at some point in the future. But you know, how much of that is talk versus <coughs> action? <coughs> that's another question. And um, you know, I don't really believe a huge amount of what the central bankers say because so often they come out with a surprise. So you never know. So FOMC, uh, minutes are due out soon, uh, so we'll cover that in more detail when it comes out. But that gives you an idea of the fundamentals. It's all about that non farm payrolls figure. Will they or will they not raise rates in the next couple of months? Uh, Yellen says no, but really, who knows? So, without further ado, let's go ahead and have a look at the US theory from a technical perspective. So, this is where we are, a very strong uh, candle um, moving higher after that non-farm payrolls figure. Kind of surprising actually, because it came out better than expected. So a number of traders might have thought that might have caused the US theory to, dr to kind of drift down as it increased the likelihood of uh, an interest rate hike. Uh, but the markets have taken that to be, well, it's good, but it's not that good. And Yellen's already said she won't raise, high, she won't raise rates. So uh, here, uh, stocks have gone up and the US dollar has gone down. Nevertheless, 86% of CMG market clients are currently short. And uh, when we look at this, uh, this is currently where we are. So we're not that far away from the recent high at 79.79 and the longer term potential highs at 18,367. Moving on to the UK 100, we're still stuck in the range. We still finished negative for Friday, but off the session lows, it bounced up 60, 70 again quite nicely. It does look to be that we're in some sort of channel formation right here with 62.20 being potential resistance and 60.70 being potential support. CMC clients are unsure as to what to do next. They're almost 50-50. Moving on to Japan, 225 is broken lower. We obviously moved lower there on Friday. Um, we smashed through 16,384. Uh, we're, no, we're quite a lot on the wrong side of that just now. We're below both moving averages. The other technicals are moving slightly lower as well. Longer term potential support at 14,671. If we do get any rebound, there could be potential resistance around about 16,384. 88% of CMC market clients are currently long. Moving on to dollar yen. Now dollar yen, as you can see, I would say there's uncertainty, but it's a dollar weakness really. Uh, you've seen the, the dollar kind of break that little bit lower. People are buying the yen incidentally, breaking below uh, 111 spot six. You are looking at the tips of these candles as the next potential support levels. And if you go a little bit further back, you are probably looking at 110 spot zero eight as being the longer term potential support with 60% of CMC Marcus clients currently long. 
Moving on to crude oil, West Texas, it continues to lose momentum even in the face of a weakening US dollar. 51% of CMC Marks clients are currently short. A lot of this has got to do with uh, the Middle East and refusal of cuts or pauses in production. Their, le their most recent uh, line of rhetoric is actually coming out of Iraq and they've said that they, under no circumstances, will be cutting production. They can't afford to anyway. They want to get as much money as possible. So $35.13 is the next potential support. We broke through that 21 period SMA. The next support after that would be 31 spot 82. Moving on to gold, um, gold's all over the place. Um, again, the dollars reacted as if you're not going to get a cut in rates. The shares have reacted as if you're not going to get a, a cut in rates, and gold's not shooting up higher, which uh, begs the question, what, what is it doing? Because if it's less likely that they're going to be raising rates in the US, uh, you know, gold should be doing something, but really it's just moving slightly lower. So I don't know if there's people thinking, well, is it possible that, um, that the US will raise rates maybe in June or at least talk about it in June and people are taking, because it's, it's different, different, different views that you're getting right here. You're getting gold reacting a little bit like there's a possibility of a rate hike coming at some point and you've got shares in the dollar acting as if there's nothing happening at all. So a little bit of a contradictory view right here. I, I personally would probably just leave gold a little bit alone just now unless you're currently or already trading it. Um, there could be like some sort of head and shoulders formation here uh, appearing and this could be like a neckline. As a matter of fact, I could even just draw that on just for, just for fun, wrong one. So we go from here to the tip here. I'm just going to get rid of these, of, this old, of these old ones right here. <coughs> so could be looking at a, a shoulder, a neck and a shoulder and that could be a neckline break, which if it does happen, if we break below 11.91, you could be looking at 11.31 as the next potential support. 87% of CMC Marks clients are currently long. So moving on to Euro dollar and GBP USD, just to finish things up. So the Euro has actually been getting a lot stronger. Um, that's not really helping Myro Draghi, giving him a big headache. He actually wants the Euro to be weaker, to make it more competitive. Uh, obviously, you still have fallout from the Brussels attack that could be having an impact on European productivity and, uh, and uh, consumer activity, which isn't so good. Now, we are down a little bit today on the euro dollar, but we we're all over the place there on Friday. We actually ended a little bit quite close to where we opened, actually, but very volatile session. 83% of CNC Marcus clients are currently short. As we get closer to one spot, 1489, people might be looking as an, that as an opportunity to sell. If it breaks above that, you are looking at the next potential resistance being closer to one spot, 1716. And if we finish up there with GBP USD, um, the sterling still can't get a break. It dropped again um, on Friday, slightly lower this morning, on the wrong side of one spot, 4228. Uh, you could be looking at the next potential support level being one spot 41.29. We are trading below both moving averages and we've just had a negative crossover on the MACD. 55% of CMC market clients are currently short. So economic data wise, we do have unemployment rate from the Eurozone and factory orders uh, for the US. Tuesday got manufacturing orders, housing prices and uh, PMI for the Eurozone, trade balance for the US and PMI for the US and then on Wednesday, industrial production, and of course, crude oil, petroleum sales uh, on the Wednesday as well. Well, that's it for me, guys. Join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next, and very good luck with your trading, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much, and goodbye.